I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and we're doing Community Matters uh, with uh, Russell Hanma. He is a transportation consultant, very steeped in experience in, on rail. Uh, and uh, we're talking about a big week for rail. We have talked earlier, just uh, in the previous segment, about the week in the legislature. And it looks like, uh, although we don't have a final word on it because it's happening right now, it looks like the uh, Bill 4 will pass and we'll have an increase in the TAT, and we'll have an increase in the GET around the state, and the net result will be $2.4 million, make that billion dollars more than we have now in the till at heart. Uh, so we're calling this, um, you know, looking at the future of rail. Uh, now, assuming this passes, let's make a wild assumption and say it will pass. You've, you've predicted that. So what does it look like going forward? What's, may I say, down the track, Russell? Mm -hmm. Well, if you look down the track, I think uh, if we don't get derailed or anything, if we stay within Good. the track with our plan, <laughs> I think uh, you know, generating that $2.4 billion additional fund in combination of the transit accommodation tax and GET, because right now it's budgeted at $8.2 billion. To total, total job. Just to go to Middle Street, and mm -hmm. they ran out of funding with their uh, contingency fund, so they have to... Uh, generate $300 million additional, which the city council passed a bill to generate obligation, gener obligation bonds yeah. uh, in order to meet the uh, threshold okay. to meet, go out to Middle Street. Yeah. So additional, that $2.4 billion that the legislature is going to be passing the Senate bill for is going to be used, used, gonna be used from Middle Street all the way to Alamoana Shopping Center. Okay. And my think is if somehow... That, whole, that $300 million of general obligation bonds, we'll have to pay that back. Right? Yeah, definitely. And when you do that on a spot basis like that, the interest rate is higher. So the cost of those bonds is higher than it would be ordinarily. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, they'll have to raise that money from us to mm -hmm. pay it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, just want to make that point. Yeah, but I think the city has a wishful thinking that as soon as the tourism picks up, economy picks up, uh, there'll be additional increase of GET, the transit accommodation tax, because uh, you'd be seeing more tourists coming here. The tourists are spending more. As you know, our projections today, uh, I think about a week ago, the uh, Hawaii Tourism Authority came up with the numbers with the DBIT statistics uh, division that there's an increase of roughly about 17% that tourists are spending, and there's roughly 7% of increase in tourists compared to last year, which we, the State Revenue Council projected 3% increase. So we're in a boom time. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why the mayor and the cities should be happy that uh, the legislature gave this uh, kind of uh, mixed kind of uh, combination, the GET, TAT. So I got to ask you a really big question. We cannot go a step further in this discussion until I ask you my big question. Are they going to have to go back to the legislature for more? Are they going to have to do some more general obligation bonds and some more taxes? Are they going to have to do like increases in real property taxes? Is this the end of it, or is there more in the future? Right, this, let's just have our friends, uh, our fingers crossed, and I hope that uh, they don't have. To. I think the legislature did say that there's going to be a check and balance that the controller is going to have to uh, issue the checks. Uh, of what payments going to be to the contractors or whatever they, uh, the service is going to be rendered. And uh, I think that both the House and the Senate wants to have a check and balance, so they're hiring two ex-officials from both the House and the Senate to sit on the board. You mean ex-legislators? Uh, I don't know who they're going to appoint, but they, get, they, they won't have a voting rights, but they got the uh, seat to listen. And sit on, on the hard part as board. observers. Anyway. Ex-officio. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. And uh, they can report the findings to the legislature. Mm, that's and, a good uh, idea. And another thing is that, as you know, the, uh, the auditing yeah, that, talk uh, about that the state uh, auditor uh, is planning on doing. Yeah. And it's, I guess they're you know concerned about doing a forensic kind of auditing. What is a forensic audit? Uh, as you, uh, according to the rule of law, you know, when you define forensic, it, you know, it's a means people use that to look for criminal activities or wrongful doing. And if there was any uh, white collar crime and if, uh, if there was an injustification. Corruption, for example. Exactly. And uh, they can submit the findings to the police department and to the prosecutor, so the uh, office and the prosecutor can prosecute them for white collar crime. Yeah, well, how will it affect the development of the rail, though? If uh, that happens, oh yeah, that'll be I mean, somebody will lose a job. Yeah, See, that's, that's that, a... that'll be shameful. It'll be very embarrassing for the state of Hawaii. So I think you know maybe that's why you know, there was a con you know, concern that they don't want to proceed with the forensic. Uh, some, but I uh. think what the heart and uh, 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 member of council member Henry Felix, uh, who 
belongs to the heart <clears throat> board member, he will let to see the forensic uh, kind of uh, approach and the uh, council members and the city council is talking about forensic auditing right now. You think it'll happen? Uh, I don't know. Whose uh, decision is it? Is it the city or the state? Uh, I, I don't want to get, you know, I would say it's the city's decision or the state yeah, too. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. the FDA already did their uh, uh, or auditing. They already. didn't find anything and forensic they, in and there. And all they said was, you know, if they were going to do the risk test, uh, they what, should have. What a, is that, Russell? Uh, it, just to have an additional uh, contingency cushion, cushion for yeah. uh, if the things that didn't go according to the plans. Well, that'll and probably be used up, won't it? Every time you look, cycle. there's an overrun on this thing. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, what we should have done from day one was that uh, we should have. I remember my good friend, Frank Doyle who worked on the H power, and he was the old project manager on the 1990 project. You know, he'd been a uh, civil engineer, PE, homeboy, understand with DTS. Uh, so he came up with a, a, a scorecard, they call it, which analyzes the change order and the cost overruns based on the projection of the construction cycle. It's like a PERT. It's like a, a professional engineers use for using the construction cycle with the how much time and man hours are uh, included in certain project scope scope of work, and we were going to do this, but it was very cumbersome and uh, detail. So I think at the time before the heart board was established, uh, they took it out and said, ah, "We don't want to do the uh, uh, scorecard kind of approach." Maybe it'll happen now, though. Uh, I think that there's another kind of program, I'm sure, yeah. software that approach. But then they they fired, uh, they get right rid of uh, Frank Doyle. And uh, Frank Doyle was, uh, you know, he was he was good, yeah. and I liked him, and he was a guy that would do a due diligence. That relates really to the subject about whether this legislation that's happening, probably right now, right as we speak, is going to affect uh, the membership of the Hart Board, affect uh, the contractors going forward. You know, you mentioned about Kiewit's uh, departure. Mm -hmm. um, it's really too bad. Do you think there'll be other changes in the Hart Board or in the contractors? I think the heart for it's like to me it's like a musical chair. Every time we get somebody <laughs> in there, they learn the concept. They're all volunteering, so they leave and uh, you know they don't want to pursue their uh, interest. What they you know first they got into. I think we only have one person. When I started, matter of fact, I got this thing. Uh, they gave out it's called the Real Transit. It's a memorial. Uh, um, like a medallion that's made of koa, which is groundbreaking ceremony on February 22nd year 2011 at Kapolei and this is where Senator Danny Noel was there and a matter of fact I escorted him and uh, Senator Danny Noel was a very supportive of this project and even when, when the Hart Board was established he told everybody in the Hart Board when Don Horner was a chair uh, before that was uh, Kerry Onaga was the chair and told him you guys got to be a good steward of this project and he testified at the Kapolei Halley over there and he came to the groundbreaking and after the ceremony at the groundbreaking I escorted him because he was in his cane he was holding my hand and he was walking and so I was going to his limousine and I, I opened the door to him and he got in and I closed the door and I bowed to him with respect and that was the last time I saw him two, and two weeks after he Very passed symbolic, away. Eh? Yeah, two weeks after he passed away oh, but he told was. me to be a good steward and uh, keep up the good work and he knew that I was doing the he eight, wanted to see rail built yeah on top yes he wanted to see rail being success and that uh, we were gonna do it with Pono that uh, you know we wanted to do it for a future of our keikis here in Hawaii well one last question that we're gonna go Russell and that is Give me five years. What does it look like? Uh, five years down the line, I think uh, we'll probably be breaking down from that. We might be able to get to Middle Street. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to come from Middle Street. It's going to go through Dillingham Boulevard. That's where all the uh, utility location. I think there was an estimate like two hundred million dollars utility oh, relocation. Gosh. I remember when I was working on the, uh, the last project in 1990 as a state coordinator. We had all the utility companies, and that was my uh, main. I was a chairman of the retail, uh, utility relocation, and we had our utility people. They were going to do it from a good gesture, aloha. They weren't going to charge us for our utility relocation because that was it was in their plans to do the. Uh, yeah, yeah, they were behind it, yeah. yeah so, in other words, if, if we somehow work a deal with the utility company and 
check their schedule. So out. somebody has to negotiate exactly. these things. Exactly, we can renegotiate hasn't the been contract again. Yet. And, and well. if I had to guess, I would say that the condemnations required for the the path of the rail they haven't been negotiated either or paid for. Exactly. So that's I don't know if that's budgeted or not, but mm -hmm. uh, gee whiz, you know this. There's a lot of land involved, a lot of people who want to be paid for their land if it's taken for rail. Yeah, yeah, so we got a long way to go here. Yeah, this is a time maybe we've got to use that Donald Trump kind of uh, concept, make it part oh, of a deal oh, where oh, we've got to renegotiate something and kind of squeeze the contractors. Yeah. need leadership. Who's going to lead? I think the, we got a, you know, we got a new uh, executive director, uh, Randy uh, Robbins. I guess he's taking after Murphy uh, and he's going to be musical chairs yeah and I know and as you know Randy Robbins I knew him from a long time matter of fact uh, when he was a represent Canadian Bombardarian prior to that he was with AG Westinghouse the people yeah. mover system and uh, when I first met him in Yonkers in New York when I was working with Kawasaki uh, heavy Kawasaki rail car yeah. when we started the Yonkers plant in New York City yeah. with General Electric and Nishoi White a trading company yeah, too yeah. Uh, uh, assemble and develop a construction and manufacturing plant for the subway cars for the New York City Transit Authority and uh, uh, PATH trains. Oh wow, the, you've been around. So, so then Andy was one of the Westinghouse guys and uh, he came for the uh, Westinghouse air brakes because in order to do the first article inspection when you got all these suppliers and uh, parts material. Cause well, there's a lot of people in together. the country who are in this business. I mean, there's a lot of money flowing one way or the other unless Donald Trump stops it unless he stops money flowing. I mean, I th that's another possibility that this administration is going to cut off further funding, and we're going to be left high and dry, looking as we have in this this week of legislation, looking for money, you know, locally mm -hmm. um, from our people. You know, originally people bought into this whole thing with rail uh, on the on the assumption that the uh, uh, the be the the better part mm -hmm. of the, of the mm -hmm. cost would mm -hmm. be borne by the federal government. That hasn't happened, mm -hmm. and it isn't mm -hmm. happening now, and to the extent that anything could happen from federal money, that's in question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it from day one, it, was, it wasn't planned right. It was a poor planning. I think, you know, a good example, what we should have done from going from the Crocs Center, that when we first initiate, we should have first station should have been right behind the judiciary building by the newspaper building or by the bus depot. Downtown. No, in, in, in Kapolei. Because, you know, for, well, how are you going to get from downtown Kapolei to Croc, Croc Center or UH West well, Oahu? There's so campus? many mistakes made yeah, in the way that special trolley. And another thing, out. I would like to see ex extension yeah. from Ala Moana Shopping but, Center to UH. What I, what I worry about is that the, the hard board volunteers and these musical chair executives, you know, they're not going to be able to get their hands around this. And so we raised this $2.4 billion. And we have a big shakeout, and the public settles down, the hotels settle down, the county settle down, and we get back into another iteration of, of, of problems. Mm -hmm. And it costs more money, new people coming through, new failures, new contractors dropping out and all that. So <clears throat> you think it will successfully get to Middle Street in five years? Is that your answer? I think it's a short term. I hope so. I hope the, the projected plan and the, what we awarded a contract to, a Simic Taylor and Grant, uh, they better make it within the five years. <laughs> Parsons Brinkerhoff is still the general, huh? No, the Parsons Brinkerhoff, Quad and Douglas, uh, they pulled out. Uh, as I, most of my good friends and engineering consultants, uh, they all work for Parsons Brinkerhoff. When I first started working for DOT, and uh, I remember a guy named Mark Scheibe, who was one of the uh, one of the guys that orchestrated the EIS for the past thirty years, the environmental impact statement for this Honolulu Rail So project. who's the general now? So the general now is an infrastructure consulting company. So what happened was uh, Kiwet uh, didn't get the engineering consulting contract because they wanted half a billion dollars to manage and Nobody it. was going to pay them that. that way. So what happened was they all left and uh, some of them started their own engineering company. Uh, some of them went, went to the mainland as well. Well, this is in, in shambles, isn't it? Yeah. Who's going to pull this together? And what's, what was the worst scenario is when, uh, when Parsons, uh, they brought all these, when they did the selection for the, there's a selection committee when it, to, in order to award a contract for the prime contract or the core systems contract and the sub contract. And the Parsons brought all the specialists, uh, evaluators from the mainland. And these guys, strictly what they do, they specialize in evaluating uh, uh, contracts for okay, who, well, who seems, to get seems awarded. Clear. We got a and long they, way to go they on left this. after that. <laughs> and so what happened this week in the legislature, what, will, what is happening right now, and the way it looks, at least on the surface, um, is not going to be what happens ultimately. There'll be more 
uh, twists and turns and uh, uh, ebbs and flows and issues and you got to come back and tell us about it, mm -hmm. Russell. Yeah, the main thing, yeah. Jay, is we have to be positive. We, we need to move forward because we already have the infrastructure. We got the columns. We already spent billions of dollars. There's no way of yeah. turning it back. Right. We got to find a way, invested. manage a way to get to uh, uh, all in one shop. And only thing we can do is the private sector's got to be a good corporate citizen. Yeah, I, I think agree. They, I, like think, I, I think if they can. Uh, shave like 10% of the estimated that cost, would that would help a lot for Hawaii. And well, thank you, Russell. It's yeah, great to talk to you. Thanks for coming down. You have to come back and, and fill mm -hmm. us in as things mm -hmm. go forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jay. Aloha. Yeah. Aloha.